when we are upset with others, it's often because we're upset about ourselves. And so today we gather to turn inwards and work on ourselves so that we may repair our relationships and be the people that God intended us to be. Michelangelo used to say that he didn't just carve a statue. Many of you may know this. He used to say that something actually already existed within the stone that was beautiful. He just needed to free it by chiseling the stone that surrounded it and impeded its growth. And in many ways, in thinking about it, that's what we do today. We chisel the stone of indifference and hubris and begin to reveal our inner core that we were created in the image of God, ready to be partners in the beauty of creation. And so I'm glad you're with us here today in our sanctuary. Raise your hand if this is the first time that you're in the sanctuary for 16 months. Worthy of a blessing. It's great to have you back. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higianu, Lazman Hazet. Amen. For all on Zoom, it's great to have you here. I know you've been welcomed by our clergy already, but now you're in the sanctuary. And uh, let's begin with the call to worship, the Barhu, page 178. If you're able, please rise. Ya la 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 la. Page 184, as we bring together the four corners of our talit, gathering the tzitzit in our hands, we bring together not only the wisdom of our tradition, but we hold in our hands the reminders of the values and the sacred ways of walking in this world. We gather not only ourselves to this path, but we do so with great love, love for God, one for one another, and the possibility of peace and togetherness in this world. We join together with these words of Ahavi Enu at the bottom of page 184. Yeah. 
Adonai, Abocher Bamo Israel, Beahava. Page 186. Join together page 188 in the words on the screen. Vishinantaham the Vanecha, the Dibar Taha Baham, Bishif de Haha Bevetacha, Uvlech de Haha Vaderech, Uv Shoch Becha, Uv Kumecha, Ukshar Tam Lehot, Alia Decha, the Hayule Totafot, Ben Enecha, Uchtav Taham, Almazuzot Betecha, Uvisharecha. Limahan tiskeruhu, vasi tehem e komits votai, vi tem kedoshim lelohechem. Ahani adonai elohechem. Asher hot se tietchem, meheret mitraim, liot lachem lelohim. Ani adonai lohechem. Adonai Eloechem Emet. We turn to page 196. We join together in the words of Micha Mocha. Micha Mocha Bailim Adonai Micha Mocha I invite you to rise if you're able as we join together for the Amidah. Adonai Adonai, open up my lips. 
on page 208 at this time of great uncertainty 
who shall live and who shall die, we are reminded that three things alter the severe decree. Prayer, perspective, as we learned last week. Two, to turn towards one another rather than away from each other. And three, at a time of uncertainty and fear, instead of to take, to give tzedakah. And by these three things, we alter the trajectory of life and greet a new day. And so page 208, Unatana let us proclaim the power of this day. Day that awakens awe. Emet kiata hudaya umochiyach v'odaya ba'ed. Every human hand leaves its mark, an imprint like no other. Shofar gadol itaka Vekod mamadaka yishama Vomalachim yechafezu Vekhilu rehada yechafezu Vomalachim yechafezu Vekhilu rehada Page 212. On Rosh Hashanah, it's written. On Yom Kippur, it's sealed.
118. If you're able, we rise. It's in this prayer we feel as though we are angels being lifted. And in the words Kadosh, 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 it's traditional to ascend by raising your body up on your feet, your toes, as though we are ascending. Nikate. Nikate Nikate Shet Shimcha Baolam Nikate Shet Shimcha Baolam Kishem Shemak Tishimoto Bishme Maro Kakatu Valyad Nevieha Vekara Ze Elze the Amar Kadosh 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 Adonai Adonai, 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 Madir, 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 Shimcha Bechol Haaretz, Baruch Evon, Adonai, Mim Komo, Echad Hu, Avinu, hu malkeinu, hu moshie einu, vehu yashmieinu, vehu yashmieinu, vehu yashmieinu, verachama leine. Ani Adonai Elohechem Im Loch Adonai Leolam Elohai Ixion Le Dorvav, Le Dorvav 
Salvador, aleluya. Let's be seated and take a few moments for silent reflection using the words found in the prayer book or the meditations of the heart. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens make peace for us and for all who dwell on this earth. Page 250, Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom, Bim Roma. Continue on page 252. If you're able, please rise for the words of Avinu Malkenu. Avinu Malkenu. Shema Koleni. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful. Hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu. Shema koleinu, avinu malkeinu, chatanu lefanecha, avinu
Continue on page 255 with our Torah service. Let the reading of Torah be like prayer, a meditation to remind us what we strive for, a chant that binds us to the chain of generations. <laughs> Six, these words of forgiveness we chant three times. hear you the second time. I don't know.
Let's all be seated. Rabbi Harper's already made her way up onto the bima, but for those who have not met her, I want to introduce you to our new assistant rabbi, who I am thrilled is a part of our Temple Beth Elohim community. Uh, at a time when many synagogues were forced to contract in the past year, uh, thanks to the generosity of our community, we've been able to expand. And um, I'm just so grateful, thanks to a gift. We have partnered with Gan Academy, uh, an amazing Jewish high school in our area, um, to share um, the teachings of Rabbi Harper. And in her short time here, the past three months, she's really demonstrated a unique ability to uh, teach and unravel the text in a really beautiful and powerful way. So I thought it would be best to introduce her to our High Holy Day community by sharing a word of Torah with us. And so she's going to share a brief word of Torah. Hey, there's our high, there's our high school group. Great. Who uh, I hope you'll meet Rabbi Harper real soon as well. Perfect. So she's going to share some Torah with us. Then before the Haftarah, we'll hear, as we always do during the High Holy Days from our president, uh, his annual report. And uh, at the end of the service, I'm going to share a few words as well. So now that our high school students are here, Perfect. let's learn. Thank you, Rabbi. Rabbi. They go. <laughs> Before I sit down. It's got to be safe. It's important. Thank you. From across the playground, I could see that tears were imminent. Claudia, one of my three-year-old preschool students, was playing with Benji's favorite toy car, Benji was trying so hard to be patient and wait for his turn to play, but Claudia wouldn't relinquish the car quite quickly enough for his liking. I saw his eyes start to narrow and his hands begin to quiver with barely restrained energy, and I started running toward them just as Benji exploded with a yell and a hard shove, grabbing the car from the ground when Claudia dropped it in surprise. But before Benji could run off with his prize, leaving Claudia bawling beside the swings, I put my hands on his shoulders and gently turned him around to face his crying classmate. Now, when I was a child and would snatch a toy that I wanted from my younger sister, I would usually be instructed, say you're sorry. You may have been taught to do the same. But you may also remember that when you took a toy from a brother or pushed a friend in anger or frustration, you weren't sorry at that moment. You totally intended to do what you did. Your friend or your sibling was in the way of something you wanted. You saw a problem and you solved it. Benji was smiling because he had accomplished his goal, but Claudia was sobbing. Clearly, there was some teshuva to do. Benji, I asked, do you see Claudia's face right now? What does it look like? Sad, he said. Why do you think she's feeling sad? Uh, I pushed her. That's right, why did you push her? She had the car. Ah, I see. Claudia had the car and you wanted to play with it. I know that it can be frustrating to wait for our turn and to share, but we can't hurt our friends. Benji, can you ask Claudia how you can help make it better? Benji looked sheepishly at Claudia. How I can help make better. Claudia frowned and thought for a moment. Hug, she said, and then share. Benji gave his friend a hug, and they sat down together and began to play. And within a minute, they were both giggling and running off to play on the slides. Claudia didn't care what Benji's intentions were or whether he felt sorry for what he had done. It was the impact of his actions that hurt, and it was the impact that she wanted addressed. And we all say a lot of sorries on Yom Kippur, all those al-chaits and ashamnus, we might even mean some of them. 
We turn to God and we seek forgiveness for the times when we've missed the mark in thought or word or deed, whether intentionally or inadvertently. And if our repentance is sincere, we are taught in the Mishnah, the day of Yom Kippur atones for us in God's book. However, for the impact of our wrongdoings here on earth, bain adam l'chavero, between one person and another, until we've made amends with each other, we're still on the hook. Good intentions can only take us so far. At the end of the day, when the gates have closed, we are still left to face the impact of our words and actions on the people we have hurt. This kind of tshuva, of repentance and repair, and repair, is perhaps the most difficult to accomplish, or really even to attempt, once we've outgrown the playground. When we cause harm to another person through our words or our actions, especially unintentionally, we often come to our own defense by offering justifications like, I didn't mean it like that, she took it the wrong way, or it wasn't just me, or maybe even he deserved it. Perhaps how was I supposed to know I was just being honest, I was only trying to help. Whether it involved a conflict at work or a falling out with a friend, a fight with a family member, or a comment that caused offense, when these kinds of justifications take hold in our minds, it can be incredibly difficult to look beyond what our own intentions were in order to fully comprehend the impact of our actions. If we can only see as far as our intentions, we may believe that a sincerely meant sorry will suffice to effect repair. But our tradition teaches sorry isn't enough. Unless we make restitution and reconciliation, the teshuva is incomplete. And that restitution and reconciliation is only possible when we set aside what our intentions were and seek rather to truly understand the impact that our words and deeds had on the upset party. Once we understand that impact, we can begin to work towards a meaningful and lasting form of repentance, one that usually begins by asking, just like Benji did, how can I help make it better? In the Torah reading for this Yom Kippur morning, from the final chapters of Deuteronomy, we find some of my favorite verses in which Moses offers these words of encouragement. Surely, he says, this Torah is not beyond your reach. It is not in the heavens. It's not across the sea. No, it is very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart to act upon. As I read these verses again this year, I noticed something for the first time. This passage presents two kinds of Torah. There's Torah that is bapicha in your mouth, and Torah that is bilvavecha in your heart. And these types of Torah are surely closely related, but there's an important distinction in this mouth-heart dichotomy. Torah that's in your heart is concealed, like our intentions. It can only be perceived by you and perhaps by God. But the Torah that lives in the mouth that's different. The mouth is the gateway between the internal self and the external world. The mouth is where the air we breathe in transforms into the words we breathe out, where the secret thoughts which hatch in our hearts can take flight fully fledged to a light in the hearts of others. The Torah of our mouths, that's Torah that can be revealed and lived, Torah that can draw upon and impact the world around us. Through the mediation of our mouths, we have the power to bring intention and impact closer together. This Jewish year, which began on Rosh Hashanah, is 5782, or in Hebrew letters, Tav, Shin, Pe, Bet. With just a little flip of those last two letters, we have Tav, Shin, Bet, Pe. 
the acronym for Torah She Baal Peh, the Torah of the mouth, the one that manifests our values through our words and deeds. This year, therefore, invites us to focus on how we can bring more Torah, more wisdom and values, goodness and justice into the world through our actions and our speech. And now as we prepare to read from our sacred Torah this morning, these powerful words that speak to us across the millennia, consider as well the power and the impact of your words on others. Imagine how the words of your mouth will bring the good intentions of your heart to positively impact others this year. And in the times when you falter, as we all will, imagine how it would feel to move beyond offering justifications and continue on towards effecting justice, which begins by asking the simple question, how can I help? Make it better. Gmar Khatimatova, may we all use the Torah within each of our hearts and mouths to make this year a better one than the last. So rich, really powerful. Think, lots to think about. So I, once again, Yasha Koch, thank you for that beautiful teaching. If you'd like to follow along in our Torah portion, it's on page 266, words of Deuteronomy. Let's call up our first reader. Our first reader at the service is my colleague, Rabbi Philip Sherman. At this time, if it's possible, I'd love to bring in our Zoom community on the screens. Is that possible? Our wonderful tech team. Great. Uh, we have a lot of people on Zoom. In fact, so many that we had to use two different Zoom links. So we probably won't be able to see both links if you're looking for someone at home. But uh, at least we'll feel the presence of our broader community at this time of multi-access. So it was quite a challenge uh, in planning these High Holy Days, obviously. At one point, we thought we'd all be here. Then at one point, we thought everyone would be on Zoom. And uh, we landed in the most complicated space possible, which is both. So here we are. Now we can see both parts of our community, those on Zoom. We can now see you uh, in our sanctuary, at least some of you. We would like to continue our group honors without actually calling people to the Bema. And so if you'll just raise your hand on Zoom or in the sanctuary or even rise in the sanctuary, as we would like to honor individuals this year. And we'd like to begin with all of those who serve our medical community. Uh, it's been a challenging year for so many. And so if you're a doctor, a nurse, or you work in a medical office or a biotech industry discovering the cures of the future, we invite you to rise at this time so that we can recognize you for all of your hard work for the first Aliyah. And so those who serve frontline workers, medical professionals, let's join together in the first Aliyah. If we can place the words up on the Zoom screen as well in the sanctuary, we are now on page 258. Together, Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavorach and the community. Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Lelam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Lelam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Elohenu Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Venatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noten Hatora. Amen. Amen. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kuchem Lifne Adonai Lohechem Roshechem Shivtechem Zignechem Veshohot Vechem Kohol Ish Israel Tabchem Nishechem Vegeherecha Asher Bekerev Machanecha Mechotevitzacha Ahad Shoemimecha 
Lovrecha Bivri Adonai Lohecha Uvelato Asher Adonai Lohecha Koret Imcha Hayom Leman Hakimot Ha Hayom Lo Lam Vehu Yelecha Lelohim Kasher Tiber Lach Vehasher Nishba Lavotecha La Abraham Ulitra Kuliakov Veloitrem Levadrem Anochi Koret at a breed has od, Vet ha ele has od. Kihi at a share yish no po Imanu omed hayom lifne Adonai lo henu, Vet a share in henu po Imanu hayom. And together, those we are honoring in this Aliyah. Bar Oops, let's put the words on the screen for those on Zoom as well. There we are. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, v'chaye olam nata betocheinu. Baruch atah Adonai, noten haTorah. Just a really brief word. Uh, for those in the scientific community, because I was reading this morning in the paper, um, a doctor writing religious exemptions for those who don't want to receive the vaccine. In the Jewish religion, that's not the case. No religious exemptions. Judaism has always embraced medicine and science. Rambam, the great rabbi, was a doctor. We are partners in creation. It's interesting that uh, one of the proof texts of the fact that we're meant to engage in the world and the human body is actually bris, circumcision. The idea that when we're created, we're not absolutely perfect, which is actually a little countercultural. You would think, you know, birth, perfection, the Jewish community was, wait a minute, no, human beings makes changes. We engage in the world. And so uh, I want to bless all of those who engage in the world and help us at this time uh, with the words Eloheinu Velohe Avotenu. Bless all of our medical professionals, O oh God, and frontline workers who work tirelessly for our health and safety. O oh God, grant them strength as they labor to support us amidst these very difficult times. And bless them with wisdom and fortitude, with the hope that one day we will all gather in this building and hug once again. We are so grateful for those who work on these cures. Bless them on this day, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Second reader, Yashar Koach, Rabbi. Yes, for our second reader, it's my honor to call up my student, Ben Gelber. Come on up, Ben. And Rabbi Sapphire is back from leading our Zoom service for TJHH families. So will you come up and serve as Gabbai? And for our second Aliyah, let's see what we're going to do. Here we go. The Tao was at 1,000. was at 1,000. Tomatoes were at 39 cents a pound. E.T. was the movie. Michael Jackson's thriller was the song. And the first artificial heart was implanted. 1982. Each year we uh, look back at the 82 or the year we're in. So 57, 82, we're in 82. If you think of 1982 as a year to be remembered, born, bar bat mitzvah, the mitzvah, transitional moment, marriage, something, a new job, we ask you to rise or raise your hand on Zoom in the sanctuary, 1982. And let's join together in the blessing. If we can place the blessing up on the screen. I see the little hands. What is it called? The emoji? What is it on Zoom? 
it's called a reaction. reaction. Yes. I see the hand reactions up. You can use those for the Aliyot. So good job, Yasher <laughs> Koach on Zoom. <laughs> All right, let's let's say the blessing together. If we can put the words on the screen. Baruch Etz Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'Olam Ba'Ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'Olam Ba'Ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'Olam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. V'Natan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. We're actually skipping ahead to page 267. Uh, we are in chapter 30, verse 11. So, Ben, when you're ready. Ki ha-mitzvah hazot asher anochi mitzavecha hayom lo nifleti mimecha velo rechoka hi Lo bashamayim hi lemor Mia alela nu hashamayma Vikahecha la nu Veashmienu ota vena asena Velo me ever layam hi lemor Mia avor la nu El e ver hayam vikahe halanu veashmienu ota vena asena kikarov eleha hadavar me od befiha uvil vabeha la asoto yasher koch beautifully done. And so, 1982, folks, let's say the blessing together, if we can place it on the screen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torat emet, v'chaye olam nata betocheinu, baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, O God, God of our forefathers and mothers, bless all of these individuals in our sanctuary and on Zoom, who remember 1982 as a year to be remembered. And let this Jewish year of 5,782 be one of great health and happiness and new beginnings and memorable moments. Bless each of these individuals with fulfillment each and every day, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. All right, Eli, are you ready? Come on up, my friend. Eli Norden, I would like to call you to the Torah. Ya'amod, Hirsh Mordechai ben Avraham v'peshkala aliyah shlishi. And for our third aliyah, this year we noticed something extraordinary amidst our isolation. Every Friday night, more people attended services than ever before. Like five or six times as many. People came to services who never came to services before. And not only did they come, but they started coming every week. In the first service, I made a big mistake I have to share. I said Joe DiMaggio for a streak. And then I quickly corrected myself. Ted Williams. We're thinking Ted Williams. So if you went on a streak of Shabbat attendance this year, that was impressive. I knew people were counting how many Shabbats in a row. Um, So what we wanted to do was honor our regulars on Zoom this year. So uh, if you became a steady presence from your living room or dining room or kitchen, We would like to honor you by having you identify yourself in our sanctuary or on Zoom as a regular for Shabbat. They're all on Zoom. Is anyone a regular? Come on. We definitely have some regulars in here. I know. I know where you are sitting. I know what your room looks like on Zoom. There we go. For sure. Absolutely. Let's join with the blessing. Ready for the blessing? Yeah, I'm like taking it in and visioning <laughs> and looking for the kids that are eating the string beans and people are missing their animals, but that's okay. 
They're maybe on Zoom at home right. watching. <laughs> Let's join together. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavorach. Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Re'e Natati Lefanecha Hayom Et HaChaim Ve'et HaTov Ve'et HaMavet Ve'et HaRa Asher Anohi metzavecha hayom le'ahava et Adonai Elohecha lalehet bidrachav velishmor mitzotav v'hukotav u'mishbatav v'chayita v'ravita Uvrachecha Adonai Elohecha Ba'aretz Asher Atav Hashama Larishta Ve'im Yifne Levavecha Ve'lo Tishma V'nidachta Ve'hishtachavita L'Elohim Acherim Va'avadetam Higadeti Lachem Hayom Ki avod tovedun lo tarichun yamim al ha adama asher ata over et hayarden lavo shama larishta haidoti vachem hayom et hashamayim et haaretz. Hachayim v'hamavet natati lefanecha Habracha v'hakalala Uvacharta b'chayim L'ma'an tihye ata v'zarecha L'ahava et Adonai Elohecha L'ishmao b'kolo u'ledav kavo Ki hu hayecha Ve'orech yamecha L'ashevet al ha'adama Asher nishba Adonai Le'avotecha Le'avraham Le'yitzak l'yakov L'atet l'achem Yashar Koach, beautifully done. Our Zoom regulars, if you'll join me, or the cantor. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu Torat emet, v'chaye olam nata betochenu. Baruch ata Adonai, noten ha'torah. Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, bless these many members of our community on Zoom and in the sanctuary, who have in the past year demonstrated a deeper commitment to Jewish observance, in many cases in ways they never ever imagined, as they signed on week after week after week, joining us on Zoom, going into gallery view and heart tapping their way into Shabbat. May their blessings increase and their challenges be muted. And may they always know the love of the Jewish people, even in moments of isolation. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Let's all rise as we now raise the Torah. And before our Haftarah, it's a great honor to call upon our president, Neil Silverston. As Neil's coming up, I just want to say how grateful I am, how grateful we all are 
Um, this has been a difficult year. Um, and I really believe that our temple has done an extraordinary, extraordinary job. Uh, thanks to our leadership. And Neil has brought incredible wisdom, patience, and a, a unique ability to listen. So Neil, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get out of your way. That's okay. Thank you, Joel. We have come a long way in one year, and I am so grateful for our clergy and staff, our lay leaders, and our entire community that has enabled us to reach this moment. In Jeffrey Salkin's book, Being God's Partner, Salkin lays out a guide for how each of us can navigate our lives while fulfilling our desire to be a positive presence in the world. Salkin describes the work God calls us to as the intersection where the kind of work that you most need to do and the world most needs, needs done meet. The question I ask that I put to all of you is, how can TBE be that place for you? A place of exploration, a place where each doorway we walk through, each person we meet, is an opportunity to locate your work in the world and join in community to make the world around us a better place. In the 17 years my family has been at TBE, I've been a part of a lot of things. Two bar mitzvahs, mental health initiatives, I've searched for rabbis and cantors, built relationships with our sister congregation in Haifa, organized to reduce gun violence, and most recently, participating in our Derek Laatid campaign to sustain our future. But the first step I took, the first doorway I walked through was onto the softball field. My wife, Reese, and I had just joined in the spring of 2004. And she saw a Temple Bolden posting about the TBE starting up a softball team. You should sign up, she said. You've been saying for years you wanted to play softball again. I don't know. I haven't played for 10 years. And it's already started. It's probably too late. But I jumped in. My experience on this team, the people and families I connected with, has profoundly changed my life. I learned how to be part of a community where the people cared as deeply about each other as they did about their purpose. Sometimes we walk through one door and another one opens in a way we didn't expect. Lauren, a parent of a then two-year-old, did not grow up in a Jewish home. When her family started, started at Gan Elohim, they weren't looking to embark on a Jewish journey for their kids. They were just looking for a preschool near their home. Once it gone, Lauren joined the parents committee and her family got involved in family social action. At the beginning of the pandemic, she made personal outreach calls to other congregants and became part of a community where in Lauren's words, one of the most urgent things is to raise children with good values and empathy and caring for other people. At TBE, we can enter a room without knowing what we will find and find people centered in a space that matters, discovering together how to make our world a better place. Rabbi Sissenwine talked at Rosh Hashanah about spiritual awakening and how by approaching each experience with curiosity and openness, we can each find our path to spirituality. When I think of curiosity and openness, I think of Teddy and Saul and the Rescuing Hope program at TBE. Rescuing Hope is an intergenerational study of the Shoah. Teddy was a student at Rashi, our era's reform K-8 school, when Rabbi Sherman invited him to participate. Teddy met Saul, whose parents survived the Holocaust. For Saul, the Shoah is not a distant history lesson. It's his family's experience. Teddy learned about the Holocaust at Rashi, but here it was different. He wasn't learning from textbooks, 
but from the stories and experience of people in our community. Not only does that connect him in a more personal way to a broader legacy, but enables him to learn the lessons that we all need to face today's challenges. Through Teddy, Saul was moved by the interest of other generations. This is no longer just his family's story, this is our story. What started with study blossomed. Together, Teddy and Saul were part of a group that helped bring these stories from our community to life. They entered a room without knowing what they would find. They found people centered in a place that matters, discovering together how to make our world a better place. One of the things I love about TBE, and there are many things I love about this community, is that we embrace possibility. The idea that with others, you can always create a new center, a new pathway to shalom. For many years, Brendan was for many years, Debbie was Brendan's mom at TBE. But when Brendan graduated our learning program, Debbie wanted a chance to be Debbie. She had spent much of her career in social service and knew what making a positive difference in people's lives felt like. And she needed to find something that, in her words, filled the hole in my being. And then Sandy Aronson, our social justice organizer at the time, invited her to have a one-to-one -one conversation. Over Diet Coke at Wendy's, Debbie shared her story. Sandy invited Debbie onto TBE's Racial Justice Initiative Executive Committee, and then, Deb and then Debbie took on a leadership role for TBE's relationship with the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization, and along with her co-lead, Amy, have breathed new energy into the partnership. Working with others in the Boston Interfaith community around criminal justice reform, mental health, and housing. We enter a room without knowing what we will find, and we find people centered in a space that matters, discovering together how to make our world a better place. I know it isn't always easy to step forward. I know to step forward, to find a pathway with others. I know not everyone feels a part of this community or in the center all the time. I've had that experience too. When I first started to pick up our kids from Sunday school, I would get in the car line outside the building. Car lines make me anxious. My inner impatience rises to the surface as each car in front of me takes what seems like forever to load up and move on. So I started to park my car, get out of my car, and walk into the building. In the atrium, I would see groups of people talking with each other in groups that I did not in any way feel a part of. It was hard for me. The choice in front of me, get back in the car or give it time. But here's the thing I discovered. At TBE, there is no one center. There are many centers, many different pathways where for each of us, we can move into a space that's meaningful where the world needs us, and there will be people there to meet us. Sometimes it takes courage to step in on our own. Like Paula, who sees her commitment to the work of the caring community as a way to introduce yourself to someone in a way that has some structure around it. In Paula's own words, I am here, and now I hear. We become connected because you are seen and your experiences matter to other people. When you remove a sense of isolation from someone who is going through something terrible, the rippling effects of kindness are immeasurable. Paula entered a room not knowing what she would find. She found people in a space that matters, doing work that by any definition is work our world needs done. We have been through so much disruption and uncertainty over these past 18 months, and yet we charge ahead with strength, because for our finance team and our Derek Laatid campaign, which literally means path to the future, sustaining our community is a place where meaningful work and the work our community and our world needs done meet. This work enables pathways to shalom to emerge for all of us. Of course, there is no single path, 
that we all follow towards that intersection Salkin describes. In 5782, I invite you to walk through these doors anew and enter a room not knowing what you will find. Because each time we are welcoming, each time we tap someone on the shoulder, each time we allow ourselves to be open to a conversation or an invitation to walk through one of our many doors, our community evolves to meet the moment. And we push, and we push those doors open even wider for others to enable all of us to find that place of meaning and purpose, of spiritual awakening, and to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Shana Tova. And so it's uh, a custom in our tradition to hear the Haftarah chanted, words of our prophets that supplement or perhaps even add to the message of our Torah portion of the week. And so it's with great pride that I call up my students, Abby Treslow and William Goldstein, to offer the blessings for chanting uh, Haftarah, as well as hearing from the Haftarah itself. And today we're going to hear from the words of Isaiah. So Abby, when you're ready, you could take your mask off and offer us the blessings before, and then William will follow. Okay, come on. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bahar Bin Vim Tovim Viratsaha vidivrehem hanem arim bemet Baruch ata Adonai Haboher batora uv Moshe avdo uv Yisrael amo uvin vie haemet vatsedek Kira vigaron al tachsoch kasho far harem korecha vehaged le ami pisham uavet yaakov hatotam veyoti. Yom yom yidroshu vidaat derachai yech patsun ke goi asher sadaka asa umishpat elochav lo azav yishaluni Mishpate Sedech Kirvat Elohim Yachpatsun Lama Samnu Vilo Raita Ininu Navshenu Vilo Te Da Hain Beyom Somchem Tim Se Uchefet Vecho at vechem teen go shoe. And Abby will offer us the blessings following the recitation of Haftarah. So Yasher Koach, William. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Tzor Kul HaOlamim Tzadik Bechol HaDorot Ha el hana eman ha omer vi ose ha mida bear umekayem shekol devarav emet fat sedek al ha torav vi al ha avodah vi al han vi im vi al yom ha kipurim haze 
Shinatatalanu Adonai Eloheinu Limhi lavli slicha u kapara Nekavodo tiparet Al hakol Adonai Eloheinu anachu modim la Umavarkim ota Yiparashim ha Befikol haitamid leolam vaed Udvarcha emet vikayam lead Barucha ta Adonai Melef mochel visolaya la avinotenu, vila anavotam obeyed Yisrael. Uma avir ashnotenu, bechoshana vishona, melech akol haaret, mikadesh Yisrael, viyom hakiporim. Amen. Yashar koach. Cantor, we're going to add a prayer here. Um, there are people in our community who are hospitalized, and sick. And uh, we'd like to ask for God's blessing upon them with the words Mishiberach. And so on Zoom, I think the chat room may be available to type their names in our sanctuary. Let's hold them close. If you'd like to whisper their names aloud and we'll create a, we'll create a collection of names together as we hold them in our hearts. Please rise as we return the Torah to the ark. Now continue with the public confession on page 296. If we're able to place these words on the Zoom screen as well, so that we can all participate. Once again, beating our hearts for each transgression. These words are in the plural, recognizing that within our community, we have all transgressed. Ashamnu Bagadnu Gazanu Dibarnu Dovi 
as we turn to page 300 as we recite responsibly the words in Hebrew and in English. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha beones uvratzon Alchet shechatanu lefanecha beyodim uvlo yodim Together, the ways we have wronged you under duress and by choice and harm we have caused in your world consciously and unconsciously. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha bivli da'at the ways we have wronged you through our thoughtlessness and harm we have caused in your world through impulsive acts of malice. The ways we have wronged you by abusing our power and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. And we continue on page 302 with just the English. The ways we have wronged you by, by giving, giving in to our hostile impulses and the harm we have caused in your world through inflexibility and stubbornness. The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit and the harm we have caused in your world by making light of serious matters. The ways we have wronged you in our routine conversations and the harm we have caused in your world through envy. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. in your world by hating without cause, the ways we have wronged you by losing self-control, and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink, the ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality, and the harm we have caused in your world by hardening our hearts, the ways we have wronged you through greed and exploitation, and the harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty in business. The ways we have wronged you through our innermost thoughts and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. The ways we have wronged you by offering or accepting bribes and harm we have caused in your world by profaning your name in public. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement.
110. And on page 310. No 310. No oh, 310. <laughs> That's what happens when you're leading TGIHH prior to the service. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Rabbi Sherman for leading Yaldenu and, and Rabbi Sapphire for leading TGIHH uh, and Ryan, our, our rabbinic intern, uh, for leading services as well, TGIHH, and Rabbi Harper for her beautiful Torah and Neil, ah, the mask. Oh, that's my mask. That's your mask. <laughs> and Neil, our president, for leading us so well. Uh, we're going to conclude very soon, but I, I want to share a little bit uh, prior to our announcements. It's been a, a crazy year. I'd like to give us a word to think about before we go. Bereshit bara. In the beginning, there was Walter Cronkite and the CBS Evening News. Anyone remember Walter Cronkite and the CBS Evening News? Until June 1st, 1980, when Ted Turner introduced something new called CNN. America's first ever 24-hour news channel. And that's the way it is. Until this very day, 24 hours in a row, over and over again, we are inundated with news. And it's not just CNN. Fox and MSNBC and HLN and Numbers on my cable dial that I never even knew existed before. The news just doesn't stop. Climate change and COVID, anti-Semitism in Afghanistan, racism, gun violence, economic disparity, Iran and the Uyghurs, hurricanes and tornadoes, Ben and Jerry's, Ben and Jerry's, Ben and Jerry's. Abortion and hunger and immigration. The comedian Hassan Minaj comments, it's like having 50 tabs open in our mental browsers all the time. And if we're not careful, we're going to crash. There's even a name for it. It's called compassion fatigue. And I see it. A condition, and I quote, characterized by emotional and physical exhaustion, leading to a diminished ability to empathize or feel compassion. And in many cases, we're there. It's too much. And so our tradition reminds us, lo alecha hamlacha ligmor, you are not obligated to complete the work. Be gentle on yourselves. And yet, the Mishnah concludes, you are not free to desist from it. You have to do something. Or as Minaj likes to say, don't close the browser. Just close a few tabs down. Just for now. Because right now, at this moment in history, it's just too much to handle. But keep a few tabs open. You see, Judaism doesn't give in to fatalism or despair. Even in the greatest pain and sorrow, our people have affirmed life and played an active role in the universe. We are God's partners in creation. It's an incredible statement if you think about it. We are God's partners in creation. It's, it's led to a lot of great doctors, Jewish lawyers, teachers, philanthropists, social activists, this notion that you need to do something. Even though you're small and the problems are big, that you can make a difference. It's a radical theology that we should consider because we're a small people. And we often take this theology for granted. In fact, if I can sum up this radical theology with one word, 
I can really only think of one, and it's a Yiddish word. The word is chutzpah. You may have heard of it before. Chutzpah. Now, I recognize that chutzpah has taken a beating in the English language. If you look up chutzpah in the dictionary, it says unmitigated effrontery, gall, audacity, nerve. Even Leo Rostin in his classic, The Joys of Yiddish, defines chutzpah this way. Rostin writes, chutzpah is incredible guts, the quality enshrined in a man who having killed his mother and father asks for the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. That's chutzpah. But my friends, chutzpah is actually a positive term early in the Jewish tradition. It actually first appears in the Talmud when describing the land of Israel. When it says that despite all of its devastation, Israel remains irrepressibly fertile. The land had chutzpah. In fact, according to my, rab my rabbinic colleague, Ed Feinstein, in the Talmud, it means strength. It's the strength to insist on the significance of the human being and the possibility of human goodness. The strength to insist on the significance of the human being and the possibility of human goodness. Even in the most challenging of times, chutzpah, Feinstein writes, is to face any power, even God, to champion life, demand justice, and appeal for compassion. Chutzpah is the gift of a small people who have confronted extraordinary challenges and know that while the human being is small, we can make a huge difference in our world, especially when joining with others. And so before we go, here is my Yom Kippur appeal, which is have a little chutzpah this year. We need it. You may not be able to solve every problem all the time, but I hope you'll pick one or two, and help strengthen the world. This has been a crazy year. And so today, I'm not going to single out one initiative as I've done in the past. There are just too many needs in our world, plenty to fill CNN, Fox, and MSNBC. Right here at the temple, we have committees for combating anti-Semitism, civil discourse, climate change, facing history, greater Boston interfaith organization, gun violence, racial justice, transgender transgender equity, voter registration, family social action, family promise, Jewish big brothers and sisters, part takers, prisoner program, literacy tutoring, blood drives, our bone marrow drive. We are actually searching for a kidney right now for a wonderful member of our community. There is Mass Bay mentoring, family table, women's lunch place. The list goes on and on. It is overwhelming. It is absolutely extraordinary. You don't have to do it all. You don't even have to do it at the temple. But I hope you'll pick one with your time or with your money. There's the Social Action Fund right here, the TBE Fund, the Rabbi's Discretionary Fund many initiatives, you can make a difference. Now, in the past year on Yom Kippur, I've often focused on one issue, the environment or racism or welcoming Syrian refugees. I'm not going to do it this year. Last year, I mentioned our, me our mental health initiative that's amidst a time of challenge and contraction, we were able, thanks to a generous gift, to hire our first social worker on staff, something truly unique. I must say, we kept her busy this year. I am so grateful that we took that bold step in the life of our congregation, and we're going to continue to lead in this area. But today, I don't want to single out one. I just want to introduce you to two new initiatives that I'm incredibly proud of, and I hope you'll come back this afternoon on Zoom to learn more about. 
because at three o'clock right after yoga on Zoom, sponsored by Down Under Yoga, we're going to have an hour of learning. Three o'clock. We could spend all day, but it's going to be brief because it needs to be to fit it into the day. But at three o'clock, we're going to explore food insecurity and learn about a new initiative called TBE Table. You see, this summer, a man approached me from Village Church, our partner church downtown. And he said to me he worked in the food industry, preparing hundreds of meals for large institutions. But when COVID hit, he couldn't go to work. So he landed at home, and like many of us, he started to cook. But whereas many of us started to cook muffins and brownies and cookies and all that kind of good stuff, he started to cook 20 to 30 meals a week in his kitchen and then just give the meals away. And he realized that there was a need out there. And so he went to his church and he made a difference. He started what they're calling village table for the village church, making a few hundred meals for the needy every month. And then he came to us and he said, would we join him? And this summer, thanks to a generous gift, we recalibrated our freezers in the kitchen. We recalibrated our refrigerators. We updated the whole kitchen to begin what we hope will be thousands of restaurant quality meals for any person who needs them. We're going to start small. Right now, we're actually making 400 meals a month. And we want to scale up way beyond that. And we're going to deliver these meals to soup kitchens and food pantries all around our area, social service organizations, and we're going to keep some right here in our temple freezer. And any person who needs them can walk into our building, enter into the kitchen, open up the freezer, take as many meals as they need, and just walk out. Because what we realized is there's hunger right here in Wellesley. You may not believe it. There is great economic disparity in our nation. We know that, but it's here too. This past year, some got richer and some got poor. And we can do something. So I hope you'll come at 3 o'clock to hear about this initiative. We're going to need drivers and cooks and coordinators. Right now, it's small. It's just getting off the ground, but we're getting ready. And then following that half an hour, we'll be joined by the president and CEO of Mazon from California, one of the gifts of Zoom, and hearing about our program. We're going to transition at 3.30 and turn to Washington, D.C. Thanks to the gift of Zoom, we're going to welcome Sarah Kloss, the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the State Department's Bureau overseeing the Office of Refugee Admissions. And we're also going to hear from Congressman Jake Oshenklaus at that time, who served in Afghanistan. As we as a community prepare to welcome Afghan families to our community. Once again, collecting money and volunteers to reach out to these families. In this case, you know, we know how to do this. We did this with our Syrian families. In this case, in some ways, it's more complicated, it's more expensive because of the idiosyncrasies of, we'll hear more about this at 3.30, but there are conditions on if they're able to work or not um, because they're not under refugee status. And so we've got work to do, um, gathering people. The good news is we know how to do it. We've done it before. We did it a few years ago. We know welcome the stranger in our text. So I hope you'll join me in the hour of learning. There are so many ways, and we are doing incredible work. We are building the midst of the heroes of tomorrow, teaching each one to do something. So a final story, because there was a young student, this is a story, not a true one, who found a large map of the world in the newspaper. The student was very curious about the map, and so she took it to her teacher. And the teacher, being very smart, thought of a way to challenge the student. So the teacher took the map of the globe that was in the newspaper and just tore it into lots of pieces, threw it on the floor, and said, okay, here's some scotch tape. 
Now put it all together. And then turned away, returned to her work. The student got down on the floor, and in an amazingly short amount of time, the student had completed the assignment. She had correctly taped every piece together of the entire world. And so the teacher asked, how were you able to reassemble that fragmented world so quickly? And the student said, there was a picture of a person on the backside. I repaired the one person, and the whole world got fixed, too. I love that story. Start small. While it may seem small, helping one human being, it is actually awfully, awfully big. Nothing important in life is created without a little chutzpah. Nothing big in life is created without a little chutzpah. And so this year, may we reclaim a little chutzpah, marshalling the strength of this community. I hope you'll join us to learn 3 o'clock, 3.30. Then we're going to come back for the hour of response at 4.30. Gamar Chatimatova, may you be sealed for a meaningful new year. With that, I actually have a few more announcements besides hour of learning. Yoga, 2 o'clock. So that means we have time to get home, get changed. Yoga, 3 o'clock, hour of learning. And then if you're rejoining us back in the sanctuary, a little time for transition because the hour of response returns. Lee Weiss, Alan Fanger, and Liz Copen will be speaking, always a highlight of the day. That's available on Zoom as well. Um, then immediately after the hour of response, we're going to transition to Yisker and the afternoon service and Ne'ila in the sanctuary on Zoom as well. Ne'ila is a, a new Ne'ila service composed by Noah with help, Cantor Zell, I'm deeply appreciative. And then we're gonna end together at seven o'clock. Few important announcements. Um, I wrote them down somewhere, which is very unusual for me, so I should, may as well use them. Now I, think I can't find them. I it begins on September though. 18th. Does that that wasn't the announcement up? that I really wanted to make, but that's an well, important announcement Well, one of them is make too. sure, yeah. please, to put your, your machzareem back ah, on your good. seats the, before you leave. The, the, which one were you saying? The prayer books on your seats. Oh, thank you. That was the one, yeah. <laughs> what I really wanted to call your attention to, the social justice work that we're doing is incredibly important. I was so proud that it was really important to me that the first thing we did when we entered this temple was not to actually pray, but to pray with our feet and do. And we hosted a blood drive to open our building. That defines this place, caring and love and outreach. Sakasa meets on the 18th of September. The Green Committee meets on the 23rd of September. TB Table meets on the 29th of September. The Racial Justice Initiative meets on October 4th. The list goes on and on. So just keep checking your emails. Uh, Lisa Miller on the 28th will be speaking on the book, The Awakens Brain. There may be extra copies outside. A few other announcements. This afternoon, if you have any time, which I doubt you will, um, because we're so busy in here, but the podcast that we sent home is really extraordinary. If you don't listen to it today, please do it tomorrow. Um, there's a reflective walk. And then Sukkot is soon approaching. Uh, Monday night, we observe Sukkot, our, our feast of gathering in the sukkah. And then, not this Friday, but the next Friday... We have a hootenanny. You it bet. is a Sukkot Hoot Nanny. Uh, rabbinic intern Ryan Lesnar and I will be co-leading that with all of you. Just bring your voices, bring yourselves. There will be some nosh, but we'll talk more about that after the fast. So now's the time. You can do it. Let's end with... Gotta let the love... Let's all rise. Gotta let the light in. Gotta let this moment be a friend. Gotta let the love in, gotta let the light in, gotta let this moment be a present. Gotta let the love in, gotta let the light in, gotta let this moment be a present. Gotta let the love in, gotta let the light in.
On Yom Kippur morning, there is no Aleinu, no Kaddish, because we're intended to feel as though we're in the middle of something. So I invite you to light up your brain with yoga or meditation or a walk in nature this afternoon, then the hour of learning. Let's give of ourselves this coming year. Gamar Hatimatova, we'll see you real soon. Thank you to our musicians and happy birthday, Ben Hoadley. <laughs> Yeah.